Welcome to Top Advisor Marketing, where you will learn how to become a prolific online influencer, attract more ideal clients, and grow your practice. Brought to you by Top Advisor Podcasting, a done-for-you podcasting solution built just for trusted advisors. And now, your co-hosts of Top Advisor Marketing, Kirk Lowe and Matt Halloran. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. Kirk and I go to conferences pretty regularly now, and we have the opportunity to meet some pretty cool people. And while we were at a 401k conference, actually the big Excel 401k conference that Ross Marino and his team puts on, I got to meet a woman who is in the same space that we're in, with the exception of she specializes in 401k marketing. And it was so fascinating talking to her because we experience a lot of the same issues, but she also has some really neat things that they do that we don't do that you might want to take advantage of. Rebecca Horahan is the founder and CMO of 401k marketing. Rebecca, welcome to the show. Hi, Matt. Thanks so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. I, I'm so, I can't wait to pick your brain. But before we actually really dive in deep into your cranium here, I'd like to find out a little bit more about your history because when we had met originally, I was totally fascinated by the, the track that you've taken to really create this juggernaut of the 401k marketing company that you've built. So, so where did it all begin? Thank you. That's so sweet of you. Uh, well, we started 401k marketing nearly six years ago, which Ow, it feels like the blink of an eye. And it all started from this concept that retirement plan advisors are unique, they are different, and therefore they need specialized marketing so they can promote who they are and how they can truly support employers and participants. So that's where you are now. How did you get there? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you, 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 oh, like, yeah. so, from an education see, yeah. story. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. Well, when I started nearly 15 years ago, uh, I started with Fidelity Investments way back in the day on their research and analysis team. Then after Fidelity, I decided to go into, I had this idea that I genuinely wanted to help people. And I thought being a financial advisor would be in a fantastic way to do that. So 22-year-old, bright-eyed me jumped into the advisor seat. And I'm sitting down with different uh, families. My uh, mentor at the time was a retirement plan advisor. And he handed me an Excel spreadsheet. And because, you know, I didn't have that much to do at that time because I was still trying to like build a book of business and I was young and I was excited. And he said, Hey, why don't you call all of these business owners and see if we can get some appointments? So phone call after phone call after phone call, I went through this Excel spreadsheet, ended up getting some meetings for us and really started to kind of cut my teeth in the 401k world. I, I very, I'll i admit this to you guys. I very embarrassingly called the form, the form 5,500 instead of the 5,500 because I was learning. Uh, and then after uh, when I was about, I don't know, a couple of years later, I got this great opportunity to join a record keeper and I learned from the inside out so that the TPA liaison side, every time there was an opportunity for a marketing portion, I raised my hand. I was like, how can I help? How can I help? What can I do? Uh, and then that brought me over to LPL and their home office working as an institutional consultant. And I'll wrap this up. One faded day, I'm sitting across from one of my favorite advisors who had just won this super prestigious award. And I said, what are we going to do? How are we going to promote this? And they very calmly said, oh, no, we're not going to do anything. No, why would we? And I was just so surprised. And I said, we have to do a press release. We need to tell your clients about this. You need to do a client appreciation event because you wouldn't be here without your clients. And they went, that's a good idea. And that spark and that light bulb moment happened when I said, why aren't retirement plan advisors shouting it from the mountaintops how they genuinely impact retirement outcomes? And that led to where we are today. You do a lot for advisors. So so I think that, you know, saying that you do marketing alone is really just a piece of this much, much larger puzzle. Because you also do branding. And I have found that 
<clears throat> especially in the 401k space, that there aren't a lot of great brands. Why is that? Why do people seem to think that the 401k market doesn't need to be branded like any other business? That's a great question. It's I don't have an answer for that. I've been reading a lot lately, actually getting in preparation for the 2020 uh, FI360 conference. We're doing a workshop called Build a Brand Workshop, where we're going to teach advisors how to unearth the psychology of brand, why, and what's the meaning behind it. And so to answer your question, I think it hasn't always been a top of mind priority. If you think back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, advisors were more regional focused. Mm -hmm. So you would have kind of, you know, your community knew that you were the retirement advisor. Well, now with the advent of social media and digital marketing and kind of the conglomeration of the internet, people have had to go beyond just the referral from a trusted source to really being digitally recognized. And then when someone goes to your website, they see it's beautiful. They click on your blog. They see your writing on a consistent basis. So it's up to date. They go to your LinkedIn profile, great banner image, and you're posting. That's all instilling confidence in that person who's been referred to by a credible source to take that next step. And I don't think historically we had all of those digi digital verification marks before. It was just a one-to-one -one connection. But with that advent of change and kind of due diligence beforehand, now we're starting to see the importance of developing a holistic brand that we it's just new in the marketplace. When you work on somebody's brand, do you talk to them about, about niching out how specific do you want these 401k, these, these plan uh, administrators, these people who provide really not only great education, but great service to my generation, which is Generation X, right? We were like the forgotten generation in marketing when it comes to financial services. How do you help them with that? And, and what sort of level of importance do you put on that, Rebecca, versus being more of a generalist brand? We always, funny, you're Gen X. So Gen X, just I think is really interesting. 73% of Gen Xers research online before taking the next step. And from a communication standpoint, Gen Xers statistically prefer email over phone calls. Matt, would you, how do you, how do you relate to that? I say all men to that sister. <laughs> I love that. Uh, it's, so to answer your question, we ask our clients, uh, when you think of your business, so you're, you run a business at the end of the day. So take a step back and look at your revenue. Where does your revenue fall? 401ks, management, other business planning. And then percentage wise, how much of it comes from each source? Then give your website shelf space that represents that. And then we say, okay, that's where we are today. Three years from now, where do you want to see your business transition to? And then what we'll do is transition the site so that way it makes sure that whatever percentage of revenue you want to drive to that section is allocated in terms of shelf space on your website. Honestly, Rebecca, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say it that way. That is so powerful and such an eye-opener for our listeners. That is a, a, a long-term vision, which very few advisors seem to grasp. Also, it's the shelf space idea instead of an entire brand switch. So what a great way to look at that. Uh, I think that's probably a lot more palatable to financial services professionals in general instead of making a very large unilateral change. Now you do a lot for advisors. So, so we, we talk about, we just talk about the branding. So, so if anybody wants to hire uh, Rebecca and her team for, for branding, we'll make sure that we have all of the contact information in our show notes. And we'll talk a little bit about it at the end, but you do so much more. Uh, let's talk about some of the other stuff that you do. Cause you just said that you need to have that digital footprint and you're right. 
I'm going to do an enormous amount of research online. The first place I'm going to go is your website. The second place I'm going to go is your LinkedIn profile. And then the third place I'm going to go is your Facebook profile to see what's public and what you're sharing, if you realize you're sharing it or not. So what do you do to help people uh, get their messages out there? What is your preferred medium, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, podcasting, video? Let's just dive in. Sure. Uh, We like to think that brand builds on brand. And what I mean by that is you want to start with your foundational elements and make them awesome. Your logo, your website, brochures, presentations, anything that you would hand or send to a client, a prospect, or a center of influence. So start there and make the foundation as strong and amazing looking as possible. So really make sure it reflects who you are, your values, your mission, and all the other elements in which you can help your clients. So that's step one. If you're ever going to start a marketing campaign, you got to firm your foundation. Once that's done, and by the way, we do help with all of this as well. We create, <laughs> we create from business brand creation. We've even helped some clients name their company, which has been really fun, to logos, to websites, to brochures, to pitch decks, to institutional service calendars, to fact finders, um, anything on the 401k side that our clients would then present uh, to the retirement plan committee. We do support. Then on an ongoing basis to create really big awareness, we recommend a content marketing strategy. And that has multiple dimensions around it. So you've got your your blog articles, emails, infographics, videos, best practice guides, social media. For the 401k space in social media, we recommend LinkedIn as the primary, Twitter as a secondary. And then we do not recommend Facebook because Facebook is generally more a business to, or sorry, it's a consumer marketplace as opposed to LinkedIn and Twitter, which is more business to business. And then we help our advisors to share all of that across across all of their digital worlds. How do you help them create content, Rebecca? So when we had met in, I don't even remember what city we were in. Do you remember yep. where we were? Oh, uh, gosh, I think it was Texas. So the Gaylord. <laughs> oh, in- that's right. It was the Gaylord. There were cows everywhere. Now you say that, I remember <laughs> that, yeah. Um, the big horns. There were the big horns everywhere. <laughs> so we talked about that a little bit. We talked a little bit about the content creation because yeah. uh, they're supposed to provide monthly education as part of the, the plan, right? And they're supposed to work with the different uh, HR organizations to make sure that they're providing good education. So how do you help your advisors create content? And then what is the preferred content that you have found that the plan participants consume and digest the easiest? When it comes to content creation, we like to ask our clients every quarter, what are you talking about? So kind of break it down for us. What's your natural cadence that you go out and deliver retirement plan committee meetings? And generally it falls into Q1 is fiduciary plan governance. So they do a look at the current plan. Where is it? What's working? What's not? How can we make it better for the upcoming year? Also, they look at their investment policy. Statement. They look at their quarterly reports as well as the annual reports and see, you know, are we changing any funds out? What does that look like? So that's Q1, fiduciary plan governance. Q2 is generally about financial wellness. Springtime now, everyone's out there trying to hit the gym, you know, look a little bit better. <laughs> the bathing suit season comes around. So we use that idea and we say, let's talk about financial wellness in Q2. It's not just physical wellness, but it's also your wallet's wellness. And so that leads into better plan design conversations, motivational ideas within companies. So you can say, you know, how can we get everyone on the, in the company to save 1% more? You know, what are some fun ideas that we can have around that? Little challenges. Uh, then Q3 is generally around plan design. So any modifications that are going to be happening for the next year, you want to start those conversations around Q3. So by the time Q4 comes around, budget's been approved, any notices have gone out, that there's a process in place so it can be successful for the following year. And then Q4 
what's new? What's next? What's happening? Uh, What are some of the trends, ideas to recruit best talent, bring on new employees, promote and give rewards to your current uh, best of the best employees? That's what we generally talk about in Q4. And so we ask our clients, what are some of the things that you talk about? What are some specific examples, success stories, lessons learned, and then let's write about them. So that way we can make sure that you always have this constant evergreen content being produced uh, that promotes your unique voice. Gotcha. Okay. Now, what is the biggest struggle that you find for helping people market in this industry to fight against the commoditization of, of 401ks, right? I mean, that's well, heck, I can just go with Vanguard, right? Or or whatever, American funds, blah, 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 right? How do you help or what are you seeing that helps, much better question, what are you seeing that helps those independent advisors separate themselves from the commoditization in order to make it so that they're able to grow their business by using your communication tools? The biggest aspect and selling feature that retirement plan advisors can use is the ability to brand themselves. So once you have a strong presence in your marketplace, the retirement plans generally, you know, they're sold through a professional introduction. And when you have a strong referral from a CPA, from an attorney, from a benefits advisor, the business owner is going to appreciate that. And they know you, they know look you in the eye, they shake your hand, they appreciate the professional services that you're bringing. And when you're well-branded in your respective area, everyone kind of knows that. And you become this, the person that people want to work with. Whereas when you work direct with a provider, yeah, you're going to have a wonderful person at an 800 number, but you're not going to get that same sit down on a regular basis and that hand-holding And I hate to call it service, but that is what it is. You're going to get exceptional service compared to what might not be the best service. So we're going to switch gears now because uh, so you, you, you told us a little bit about your journey. You told us about who you are and what you do and why it's so important for plan advisors to, to really, truly utilize services like yours to separate themselves from, from other people. uh, That's more of a commodity. That's not as service-based. But now I want to have a chance to get to know you a little bit. Do you mind if I ask you just a couple of questions? Go for it. All right. What is the best advice you feel like you've ever received, either personally or professionally? I have a couple things that come to mind. The first one is we as people live in three spheres. You have a personal sphere, a professional sphere, and a financial sphere. And if you think of these three bubbles, they kind of intersect. And at any point in your life, one of the bubbles can be out of whack. So you can have a great professional life and a great financial life, but your personal life, Mm -hmm. you need a a little gardening, a little tending to. Or you can have a great financial life and a wonderful personal life but your professional life needs a little bit of help. And at any point in time, one of these spheres can be slightly, just a little bit, nothing too crazy, but a little out of whack. And you want to always try and have all three spheres coming together. And if they are, you find yourself incredibly happy. Yeah. Let's talk about happiness. When when you look at the word success, how, how do you define that? And, and what does success mean to you? Success for me actually has more to do with my team. I want to make sure my team is super happy and that when they come to work every day, they have a smile on their face, they're super motivated, they love what they do, and we, they can have a good time laughing, joking around, getting a lot of stuff done, but most importantly, that it's a fully collaborative effort and that everyone is radiating just happiness throughout. When you're not working, because I know that you do put in some hours, uh, what do you do for fun? I mean, what, how do you decompress, de-stress and relax? Well, I used to do yoga almost every day and now I have this terrible shoulder injury. I just 
signed up for physical therapy the other day, but oh, I, every day I used to do yoga. I was working on my headstands. I was getting really good at it. And now I'm, I'm kind of uh, thinking about going, trying out swimming next. Do you have any uh, tips on shoulder pain or? Uh, no, I really don't, but I'm sure the, uh, but swimming is amazing, right? So my, my, both of my boys are swimmers, they're competitive oh, swimmers. Nice. And so, it's yeah. really unbelievable when somebody, te- see, everybody's like, oh, I know how to swim. No, you don't. Really, when you have somebody who teaches you, Rebecca, how to swim, it's crazy how much better you go through the water and how much yeah. more effortlessly. It's such a great workout, totally low impact. Uh, you're going to get back to, to yoga a- at some point, but, uh, you know, mixing it up is, I think is, is always a good thing. Now, so you and I are both huge dog lovers, and you know when when it comes to like big, like outside of yoga, what else do you like to? I mean, do you tra- you travel a lot? Do you? I don't know. I'm just looking for a a little bit more about. A, I want to lift under the hood a little bit and see what makes you tick a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely travel a lot. Um, my about year two into the business, actually, as a culture here, we all travel a lot. Mm-hmm. So about year two into the business, I was working you know, 100 plus hours a week, was running a, you know all cylinders. And then um, I found this really great deal to go to Spain for a month. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know. So for the, I booked it and I spent an entire month working remotely actually mm. from Spain. And now every year I kind of go someplace else. <laughs> so I did Spain one year. Germany, Australia last year, and then this year I'm actually going to do America. Oh my gosh! Uh, and travel around to a bunch of the national parks. Oh, <laughs> so we'll yeah. see how cell service works. But yeah, so I've already done Yosemite, Glacier National Park. I think this summer it's going to be Yellowstone and a bunch of the other kind of pack Northwest style national parks. Well, if you ever hit the upper Midwest, uh, we have a place here in Michigan that has been listed as the most beautiful place in America called Pictured Rocks. So uh, wow. that's something that you should check out if you ever come uh, come my way. Awesome. Um, what is the one thing that you seem to give away the most? It can be a book, it can be an article, it can be a TED Talk, it can be a piece of advice. What is that one thing that you're always like, wow, I say that a lot? We have a workshop. It's called 100 Points of Marketing. We developed a presentation as well as a highly interactive workbook that goes with it. And it's about a 50-minute presentation. It's fully recorded. Actually, I can share it to you in the speaker notes afterwards, where advisors go through it. And in the process, every single person gets a separate and unique marketing plan that's specific to their business. A hundred points of marketing, you have a hundred different opportunities, and then each section will tell you and highlight if you have any soft spots in your current business, and then exactly how to remedy them. Wow. Wow. Yeah, please, dear God, I'd love to put that in the show notes. That's huge value to our audience. You got it. It's also CE approved for FI FI 360 designees as well. Cool, cool. All right. To wrap up today's podcast, I just want to just ask a, a little bit more about what people can look out uh, or be on the lookout from you. So I know you're speaking at a couple events here this year, but what is the best way for people to contact you and and learn a little bit more about who you guys are and what you do? I would say come to our website, 401k-marketing.com. You can email me directly, Rebecca. I guess, Matt, we could put that in the show notes as well. Yep, we will. And then, of course, on social media via LinkedIn. Always available. Yeah. Totally follow Rebecca on LinkedIn. In fact, follow her whole team. They they post some really, really wonderful, actionable stuff that's very, very engaging We really appreciate your thought leadership. And Rebecca, thank you so much for taking time and talking about this space that we've never really covered on the podcast. And so I really appreciate it because I know there are a lot of listeners who live in your space who might not know about you. And now that they do, and now hopefully they'll be able to get their branding and their marketing on track. Um, Thanks, Matt. Thank you so much for your time. I always appreciate listening to the podcast and all the wonderful information that you share.
Thank you. Thank you. If you have not subscribed to the podcast, make sure you click that subscribe bell button below. That way, every time we come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And if you have any ideas for guests or topics that you'd like for us to cover, all you have to do is email me, Matt, at topadvisorm, that M is for marketing.com. We'll be more than happy to chat about what your ideas are. And if you do know of a person who does work in the 401k market, make sure you share this podcast with them because branding, marketing is going to be the key for that advisor to truly grow their practice and live the life that they truly deserve by helping so many people. So for everybody at 401k Marketing and all of us here at Top Advisor Marketing, we will see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Are you ready to change the way you communicate with your clients? Are you tired of being the best kept secret in your area? Learn how to become a prolific online influencer, attract more ideal clients, and grow your business. Contact us today and see what the power of podcasting can do for your business. Click on the Contact Us link on our website at topadvisormarketing.com and set up a call to learn more. Follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook for more updates and information. This was brought to you by iris.xyz, a platform helping financial professionals become better in business and life through new media and new voices. Visit them and learn more at iris.xyz.